morning, beloveds. Um, there have been going on, goings on. Uh, I went out for the walk this morning and came back and as I'm coming in, we have this massive double pine tree um, outside our front door. And as I'm walking in, I hear this bird and I'm like, okay. So I start looking for, and as I come around the corner, I see the flash of red and he went around the tree and I went, oh, and so I follow, well, I didn't follow him. I went the other way. Uh, I came up the path and I looked up and he was up the tree and he let me take, I think about eight pictures and one of them is really good. So this beautiful male cardinal was talking to me this morning. I know he was not talking to me. Um, but I got a really good picture of him and so I'm very happy about that. Uh, actually I got several good pictures of him, but I got one really good one. And then, um, I also had, uh, we have a hawk. I think it's a Harris hawk. The ones with the band, the banded tail feathers. And I see the hawk on a regular basis, but I'm not always sure it's the hawk. Well, today, the hawk flew low enough over me. I, yeah, it was still 15, 20 feet up. But low enough that I could see the bands on the tail. I was like, that's the hawk. <laughs> so I'm having a good bird day. And um, we went to see The Green Knight last night. It is not an action film, just so you know. Uh, but it was intriguing. It was definitely an Altharian legend, mythology, Joseph Campbell hero's journey uh, uh, movie. And it was gorgeous. And the actors in it did a really nice job. So, you know, it's not an action film, just so you know. Nor is it a love story, but you know, it, it, it tells a story. It's a very interesting story. Uh, so this is what's going on in my world and the Olympics are wrapping up. So I, that's one of the things I'm sad about is I didn't, I went home to watch the Olympics, but that's okay. I'll watch a little bit more tomorrow not, or today and tonight and I'll have tomorrow. So, and then the closing games are Saturday or Sunday and then everything goes back to normal. Nothing has ever been normal. All right, it is August 6th. All power is mine to use today. Our Bible quote is, And I took the two tables and cast them out of my two hands and break them before your eyes. That's from Deuteronomy 9.17. Power is the capacity to imitate and demonstrate an idea. What God has done on the scale of the universal, I can do in my own world. When the God mind initiates an idea, a new good appears for man. When I initiate a holy idea and carry it through to its logical conclusion, I'm fulfilling my divine destiny. Around me is the power of the infinite mind, forever revealing new greatness of mind, ease and possibility. I now attune myself to the true source of ideas and I execute them in my experience. I have all the power I need for mind alone is power and the mind thinks by means of me. As I use power rightly, I become a blessing to the world and a success to myself. I select ideas as carefully as I would a precious gem. I want only those ideas which are worthy of my highest spiritual development. The ideas I have selected include health, prosperity, creative self-expression. These ideas now move through my thinking, backed by my affirmations of truth. They must accomplish their full demonstration in my life, for the law of mind does the work. There are no power there is no power outside of the spirit within me. I formerly believed that, that situations, people, and problems had power, but now I see rightly. Today, I stand at the center of my world as a distributor of power. I deliberately choose to have God's power in my life act as my perfect health. I open my whole body to its inflow and operation. I select the idea of joy, knowing that as 
power flows through me. The process is a joyous one. The only power I have is God, but that is sufficient to revolutionize my being. Okay, so I have two immediate thoughts. First one being, um, he's talking about the source of ideas. And that's one of those things when I've, I've got a friend, she's one of my prayer partners, and if you say to her, well, I have no idea, and she says, well, I know something that does. And sometimes she's joking and she's talking about Google, but most of the time she's serious and she's talking about divine mind. She's talking about spirit. So um, that's the first idea. The second idea is when we get down to the... Um, I select the idea of oh yes I select the idea of joy knowing that as power flows through me the process is a joyous one and that's really important to um, because it should be a pleasant experience it should be I almost want to say a pleasurable experience when you are channeling divine power then you are holding, um, you're aligning with, you're aligning with spirit, you're aligning with your, the highest idea of you, you're aligning with God's idea of you, uh, you are bringing a blessing into the world, a blessing for yourself and for anybody that the blessing is for. It should feel good. Uh, when I do a treatment and I'm in the zone I get kind of a, a warm tingly feeling and it feels good it's a feeling that I like it's uh, which makes me want to do it more right so it should feel good um, and not artificially good you know kind of I guess maybe a runner's high would you know any endorphins endorphins it's something that is good for you, that feels good, that you can do. So you are, in, in Troward's words, a divine distributor. And when you are doing it to be a blessing, and you are not doing it for ego and selfish, and you know, you're truly aligned, then it should feel good. It should feel good. So if you're channeling power and it doesn't feel good, maybe you need to think about what you are channeling for. Maybe you haven't quite aligned um, with the ideas. Uh, and, if, and I would say the same thing if you're not feeling anything at all. The same thing. Maybe you're not quite there. You're not quite aligned. You're not. I mean, he says it in there, and I'll find the line in a minute, but the mind that made the universe is the same mind that you're using. It should feel good. And you, it should be effortless and easy. And if it's not, then I would say that there's where you have some work to do. Because maybe what you're working on isn't quite aligned. Uh, maybe you need to tweak it just a little bit. So uh, that, that would be my suggestion. So, okay. <clears throat> So all power is mine to use today because you are using the divine mind. You are using an infinite mind. You are using an infinite source of power. Uh, and you use it by right of the fact that you were made from it, by it, for it. Okay? I don't know what to do with the Bible quote. <laughs> it's Deuteronomy. So, uh, and I took the two tables and cast them out of my two hands and break them before your eyes. I don't know. Feel free. Go look it up. Deuteronomy 917. I don't know what to do with it. <clears throat> so power is the capacity to imitate, imitate and demonstrate ideas. What God has done on the scale of the universal, I can do in my own world. The mind that made the universe is the same mind you use. You're just not using as much of it. You're using a tiny little sliver of it. That's why I like to call us divine splinters. When, God, when the God mind initiates an idea, a new good appears for people. 
when I imitate a holy idea, uh, when I initiate a holy idea and carry it through to its logical conclusion. So I initiate a holy idea and carry it through. That means that I get to do the work, whatever that looks like, to carry it through. I am fill it, fulfilling my divine destiny. So that that's it. You know, our divine destiny is to create, is to create. It's to create and carry through. It is to use that divine mind to create good, to create blessings, and to create. <clears throat> All around me is the power of the infinite mind, forever revealing new, new greatness of mind, ease, and possibility. All around me. Which means all I have to do is be conscious, be aware, open my eyes, and look around. <clears throat> I now attune myself to the true source of ideas. I may not know, but I know something that does. So that means I've got to go do my work and go to the source of those ideas. And I execute them in my experience. I have all the power I need for mind alone is power and mind thinks by means of me. I have access to divine mind. Because I came from it. Because we came from it. Because we're made by it, of it, for it. Who are you? A beloved child of God. You are made by God, for God, from God. You are a beloved child. As I use power rightly, I become a blessing to the world and a success to myself. As I use power rightly, what does that mean? Okay, we've talked about it. We've talked about it a lot. What are the qualities of God? Creativity, peace, harmony, joy, love. Um, create. I think I've already said creativity. So, and the other thing about rightly is who does it benefit? And who does it harm? Because... If the only person that the idea benefits is me, that's okay, as long as it doesn't harm anybody else. But ideally, the more people that benefit from it, the better. So that's the quick gut check. <laughs> Who does it benefit? Who does it hurt? Um, I select ideas as carefully as I would select a precious gem. I want only those ideas which are worthy of my highest spiritual development. Okay, so there he is. He's putting that caveat on there. He's like, I want all of the ideas. No, I don't. I want the best, the brightest, the ones that will do the most for my spiritual development. And the ones that will do the most for my spiritual developments are the ones that are going to benefit the most people. And will harm none. Do what you will, but harm none. <clears throat> the ideas I have selected include health, prosperity, creative self-expression. Ernest is telling you what he's working on. Health, prosperity, self-expression. And do remember, prosperity is not just about money. It's not even just a little bit about money. Money's part of it. But it's a small enough part. Prosperity is a whole lot more than just money. Um, because it's prosperity is about a feeling. It's about a feeling. And it is, it is about safety and it is about comfort. Uh, and that does have to do with money. But it, it's also about the richness of your life. In terms of the love and the experiences, and the people around you. Uh, these ideas now move through my thinking, backed by my affirmations of truth. They must accomplish their full demonstration in my life, for the law of mind does the work. So they have to happen because the law of mind is doing the work. Not me, not me, because I have released it into the law. There is no power outside of the spirit within me. 
I formally believed that situations, people, and problems had power. So I have let power, I have let situations and people and problems have power over me in the past. And I am sure that I will let them have power over me in the future. But the difference is, is, as he says, but now I see rightly, which means as soon as I notice what I'm doing, I'm like, no. If you've ever seen the movie Labyrinth, at the very end of the movie, she looks at him and it dawns on her and you can see it. You have no power over me. And that's exactly what it is. And then the world collapses around her. You have no power over me. So situations, people and problems only have the power over you that you give them. Today, I stand at the center of my world as a distributor of power. And the power comes from where? From source. Which means the power is the power of love, of creativity, of joy, of harmony, of peace. I deliberately choose to have God's power in my life as an act of my perfect health. I deliberately choose to have God's power in my life. The power's there whether you choose it or not. But if you deliberately choose to use it, therein lies your power. I open my whole body to its inflow and operation. I select the idea of joy knowing that as power flows through me, the process is a joyous one. When God's power is flowing through you, it will heal, it will harmonize, it will soothe, it will calm, it will energize. All at the same time. The only power I have is God, but that is sufficient to revolutionize my being. All right. <laughs> Our mission, should we choose to accept it? Hmm. Is to attune ourselves to the true source of ideas. And use the power rightly. To attune ourself to the true source of ideas and to use the power rightly. That's the mission. Honestly, that's always the mission. <laughs> it's always the mission. The mission is the same every day. It is to know who you are. A beloved child of God in whom God is well pleased, in whom God will do anything and everything within God's nature for you, through you. All right, beloveds. The other mission for the day is the same mission, but this time I'm going to use the same words. Please do something loving for yourself, something kind for yourself, something compassionate for yourself, whatever that looks like. I'm, this right here, this is a very loving, kind, compassionate thing for me. Because uh, I'm sure you can hear her. She is purring like mad. And there's nothing quite like that feeling of holding a purring cat. And I would like to point out to you, this is a 14-pound cat. <laughs> this is not a small cat. This is not a small purr. But this is a love. This is a love. So... Um, all right, I'm going to move into the process of my day <laughs> as she bites me, um, and encourage you to do something to engage your mind and your body, uh, to go get a face full of sun, to drink plenty of water, to take care of yourself, truly because you are a beloved child of God. And while you are moving through your process of the day, please open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you 
you do live in heaven now, it's all around you. It takes your deliberate decision, your conscious opening, your willingness to look around you and to see it. Because the more you look, the more you see, the more there is. And that's how we make a world that works for everyone. All right, beloveds. Um, I'm going to turn this off before she gets any more uh, bitey. <laughs> She's still purring. And they don't hurt. I, they don't hurt. They're love bites. I, I don't know. She's also a licker. She loves to lick people. So, um, but I get to go to the park tomorrow. So, I will be on here either on time or late or early. You never know because it's the park. <laughs> And it depends on the squirrels and the blue jays and how hot it is. So please drink plenty of water. And take care of yourself. And know that Reverend David will be on around 5 p.m. on Facebook Live. I'll be back around 9 a.m. Um, and do what you need to do to take care of yourself. To have a fantastic day. A wonderful day. An amazing day. Or just have a day. That's good too. All right. There's absolutely no pressure on the kind of day you have. I just want to know for you that it's going to be amazing. All right, beloveds. So have a wonderful day and know that you're loved.